guys, so for today's video I'm going to be doing a tutorial, which I know is very weird to do in this space, but I've been wanting the lighting to be a lot better and since I don't have a ring light yet, I figured that I would just use the natural light that I use for my vlogs and try to do the tutorial out here. Also, this look is a little bit on the fly, but it is going to be a two-part look to where you can just have the straight up makeup and glammy part of it, but then I'm going to add a little bit of a special effects thing towards the end, which is an option, and which is why it is called Love Hurts. So, I think that that is all that needs to be said. Let's go ahead and get started. That felt really weird. So, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. I started off by priming my eyelids using my usual eye primer before I went ahead and took this mauve pink color as my transition shade and running it through my crease. I'm keeping most of the color in the outer corner of my eye and then just gently sweeping in towards the inner corner because I want this to be more of a natural shatter, shatter, shadow rather than anything that's like too heavy. I'm also taking that underneath my lower lash line and just making sure to really blend it out so it's nice and soft. Also let me know how you feel about this slower version of the tutorials because I'm kind of interested in it but I don't really know how to feel about it. Now I'm just taking this really big fluffy brush and just blending everything out really thoroughly so it's really, really soft. The eyeshadow of this look is meant to be really romantic because Valentine's Day, so that's why it's important to keep everything really blended. Next I'm going to be taking this really pretty sparkly purple pink eyeshadow and I'm just pressing this all over my lid and make sure that you actually press this one on because it's super glittery and it's very prone to fallout so it's important to make sure that it's actually going onto your lid rather than all over the top of your cheekbone. You don't have to use this color specifically if you can find a similar eyeshadow that doesn't have so much fallout that'd be great but I just felt like this color really added to the romantic element of this look. Now I'm just taking a white color and applying this to my brow bone and the inner corner of my eyes. It's more like a pinky white and this is just meant to highlight the brow bone and the inner corner of the eye and bring those into focus. Also make sure that you really blend that into the previous color, the transition color rather, so that it is seamless and natural. Then I'm going to take this beautiful like red wine color and I'm just going to run this along my lower lash line making sure to really buff that into the lash line and also smoke it out so that it's not super harsh. I do want it to run the entire length of the lower lash line so just make sure that you kind of get closer towards the inner corner of the eye with it as well. While filming this I was listening to Dan's Hobbit Hair live show and he said this. I am so concerned for that man. <laughs> anyway, now I'm just going to be taking this darker pinky mauve color and running that into the very outer corner of the crease just to add a little bit more depth. Just because the look is supposed to be soft does not mean that it goes without dimension. Also remember to blend that into the crease color so that it has a smoother transition. Now I'm just going to go off camera to do my winged eyeliner and honestly it came out a little bit thicker than I anticipated but it still looks good so there's that and now I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my eyebrows. So I'm starting off with an eyebrow pomade and just filling in the natural shape of my eyebrows. You can go just completely ham with this or you can go really really soft and natural, it's just up to your preference but I like to have my brows pretty dark so I'm starting off with the pomade to kind of set that base and I'm just mainly focusing this out on the outer part of the tail and leaving the front part open for when I go in with a brow pencil later on. And here is that brow pencil. So I'm just taking that and using it to lightly fluff up the inner front part of my eyebrows and just adding a little bit more color to them since they are pretty bare. What the fuck is that? Gotta love it when nature hits the window, am I right? Using the brow pencil also just helps to blend in the front of the brow with the rest of it so that it actually looks cohesive and it doesn't look like, oh, now there's your eyebrow, but you have product in the rest of it. Cool. Then to just finish everything off, I'm taking a brow gel and just going over my brows. Pretty self-explanatory. This also just adds a little bit of darkness while keeping everything in place. 
And then I'm just gonna go off camera to put on some false eyelashes. And I was trying to be cute, but it didn't work out, so there's that. Now that the lashes are on, sans mascara on the bottom lashes, I'm gonna go ahead and prime my face, and then I'm gonna start it on the SFX. So I'm gonna be using Rigid Collodion for this, and I'm starting off with using some cream makeup to map out the heart, just so I have a general place of where I want everything to go, and to set the base color for this burn slash cut. It was originally supposed to be a burn, but because it wasn't going the way that I wanted it to, I made it into a cut, but again, whatever you wanna do. You also don't have to do a heart, you can do anything that you want. You can even be really creepy and write your crush's name. That'll get him. Don't actually do that though, okay? I'm joking. Now I'm just going in with the Rigid Collodion and applying three to four layers, making sure that they dry in between so that way they kind of build up in intensity. This is often used to make scars, so I just thought it would be good to kind of create that illusion that there's actually something in your skin rather than having to create like latex and cotton layers. Also for removal, remember to apply like an oil or a moisturizer afterwards to kind of help the indent come out of your face basically. And now it's time for foundation. I'm using this one in particular, but you can use whatever you want and apply it however you want. Just make sure that you don't apply too much because I accidentally did here and wow, that was dramatic. <laughs> but anyway, so then you just wanna blend it out to the majority of your face. Do not go all the way over your face because you wanna make sure that the rigid clothing is dry before you go ahead and try to apply foundation over it. You want to do this so that the burn slash cut will look more a part of your skin rather than just something that's weirdly sitting on your face. The rest of the foundation routine is just me applying some cream contour to the contours of my face and applying a cream highlighter to the high points of my face. And I'm just not gonna show you this because I don't think it's really necessary. And then I go ahead and I set it all with some powder and then go over the contoured areas with my trusty contour powder and then over the top of the highlighted parts with my usual highlighter. You don't have to do that though because it made it super glowy to the point where my skin looked borderline oily, so I actually wouldn't recommend it, but you do you. And then I'm just gonna take a light pink blush and apply that to the apples of my cheeks. I'm going a little bit heavier on the side with the cut slash bruise because that abrasion would be naturally more irritated than the natural side of your face. I'm gonna be fast forwarding through the clips that show me adding detail to the heart because I just felt like it was really difficult to explain. You just kind of need to eyeball it to the point that you're happy with and that looks as realistic as possible. You can add all kinds of things to it, like here I'm adding blood, which made it look more like a cut but still just play around with it until you're happy with the way that it looks. At this point I thought I was done for some reason but then I realized oh shit I didn't add any lips so now that I feel stupid I'm gonna go ahead and take a lip cream and just apply this over my lips while also just blocking the view of it from the camera. Isn't that great? So I just quickly apply some lipstick and then I'm done. By the way, this pink matches the whole mauve pink scene, so just kind of aim for that color. And so here is the final look, and I actually just really love this look. I thought it was really sweet and fun to do for Valentine's Day. If you like this video and this look, then please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more videos from me, then please do hit subscribe. Thank you again so much for watching, and until next time, bye bye Thank you.